Hello, welcome back and nice to meet you. Thank you so much for watching. This is my new vintage watch, Citizen Challenge Timer from 1970s. This is a chronograph watch. This has a single subdial that is recording minutes. Also, this has a flyback mechanism. Everything is working fine. It's a shame that the dial is damaged. I want to replace this dial with better one. I don't know when this watch is serviced last time, so I will disassemble this watch to inspect the details. I found this when I was looking for a spare parts or a donor movement for my bullhead. This has a Citizen 8100 movement. This is almost same as the movement my bullhead has. That is 8110 movement. The difference is 8110 has an hour recording wheel, but this 8100 doesn't. The train side looks almost identical, but actually the center chronograph recording and minutes recording wheel is different and incompatible. I removed the automatic winding parts and I'm unwinding the main spring. Then I removed the balance complete first. Of course, we can do this later after taking the movement out of the case. I also removed the pallet cork and the pallet fork. This is to check the train works landing condition. Looks good. The movement is fixed with two screws and the movement holder. This is the movement. I don't know how the dial is damaged. It looks like dust on the surface of the dial, but actually not. I couldn't remove it. And also the day date window looks something wrong. Maybe the previous repair I used a uh, different part to repair the dial. I'm disassembling the calendar wax. To remove the day disk, we need to lift up the spring gently.
There are three screws for the dial guard plate. The dial side design is straightforward. This is a cover plate for motion works. There are many springs on this side. This minute wheel is fit by a spring. It's jumped off. This is the spring. This is a part of the date quick set. This is also fit by a spring. <laughs> it also jumped out. Other than that, it is easy to disassemble. And this is the spring for the date quick set. There should be a cap jewel here, but I noticed the cap jewel is glued. It's a shame. The dial side is disassembled completely. I'm removing the chronograph block. The chronograph block is almost identical with the bullhead one. I struggled with it before, so if you want to see the details, please check it out. This is a chronograph block. I will disassemble this block later. Then I'm removing the escape wheel and chronograph wheels. I noticed a missing part. There should be an additional spring for the chronograph block here. But this doesn't have it. This was a kind of surprise to me because the chronograph reset works fine without the spring.
both ratchet wheel and crown wheel use left handed screw. We need to turn it right to unscrew it. I think this movement is serviced recently. There is fresh grease on the plate. This is the train barrel bridge of this movement. This plate covers most wheels and the barrel. This cap jewel is also glued. The previous repairer may lose or break the cap jewel spring. I tried to disassemble it on my bullhead before and I managed to do it at the time. But I don't want to do it again because it was really difficult. I suggest not to disassemble such a tiny part on vintage watch if you don't have a spare part or donor movement for the parts. Because it is difficult to find a replacement for 50 years old watch like this and it can be very expensive even when we can find it. The disassembly is almost completed. The next step is cleaning. I'm cleaning the plate and gels by hand with isopropyl alcohol. Since this movement seems being serviced recently, the parts and gels were very clean. Then I put them into benzene bars and cleaned with uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I recommend to keep this jar until you finish assembling the watch completely. A tiny part may be still in there. We are ready to reassemble the movement. I'm assembling the chronograph block. This is a tricky part because we need to assemble many parts carefully, including a uh, spring, until we cover them with the 
plate. Here we come. This is the plate. What a relief. This lever should move without friction. Otherwise, the chronograph cannot start or stop well. I cleaned and lubed the balance shock gels of camera. I'm assembling the train works. I'm placing the barrel and wheels. This is an intermediate wheel for the minutes recorder. This should be lubed so that it can sleep when the chronograph is stopped. Then I'm placing the train barrel bridge. I screwed it after checking that the wheels can turn smoothly. Then I replaced the cannon pinion and lubed some gels. I'm assembling the keyless wax. This is easy to assemble. Each friction point and each post should be removed. Then placing the parts accordingly. This is only the tricky point. We need to engage the spring to the date quick set part. Then placing the cover plate. That's all. The winding pinion is Juddering. I didn't notice at the time, but 
I hardly visit here to fix this problem. That means I had to disassemble and reassemble this keyless works again later. I'm assembling the calendar works and motion works. I put oil to each post and placed gears. I'm meshing gear one by one because these gears will be covered by a plate later and it is difficult to check it later. This is the cover plate. Then back to the train side to assembling the remainings. I'm assembling the manual winding system. Assembling a movement is a simple iterative task. Put oil, place part, test the part, then screw it tightly. I'm just repeating the process, but simple doesn't mean easy. I'm still learning a lot. I faced a problem here. Winding doesn't feel right. I inspected all parts, but I couldn't find any issues on the parts. The reason was an unexpected one. I found a spacer in the cleaning jar. It seems being used to fill the gap between the winding pinion and the main plate. This may be a workaround by the previous repairer. I don't think this is a original part. Anyway, let's continue the assembling. I'm putting grease on the column wheel and placing some chronograph related springs. Those screws are so tiny. Then I'm installing the escape wheel and minutes recording wheel. This is the center chronograph wheel. This should be also looped. Otherwise, the movement may stop when the chronograph is stopped. The chronograph hammer should be in this position when we replace it.
I'm tweaking wheels to align all pivots into the place. All wheels should be running smoothly. Looks good. This is a spring for the reset lever. This another spring is used to start and stop the chronograph. We can check the chronograph function at this point. Start, stop, start, stop. Start, stop, start. If this doesn't switch smoothly, we need to check the chronograph block. The train side is almost complete. Let's back to the dial side to complete the dial side first. I'm pressing the date disk. And the cover plate. The last problem to be addressed is the dial. I will replace it with another used dial. But the one of feet is missing. So I glued the dial to the movement. I installed hands of camera. We are almost there. I put the movement back into the case and fix the movement with the spacer and the case clamps.
I forgot to assemble the automatic winding system. I put a bit of oil to the wheels. It's still missing an important part. The balance. I saved the best for the last. This is the last part. I replaced this roller with another one because the old one looks like the bearing is damaged. This is the finished watch. This watch was heavily repaired and modified. I didn't mention, but the case inside is also heavily modified. And the glass is not the original one. It is what it is because this is a 50 year old watch. More importantly, I like this watch. Everything is working fine. Also, the new used dial is nice looking, so I'm happy to wear this watch. Thank you so much for coming with me. I really appreciate your likes and comments and subscribe to my channel. We will see you next time. Bye.